<laughs> was hoping it would snow that time. But um, <laughs> but yeah, this, if you guys haven't been to Malvern Manor, it is it's getting harder and harder to get into there. But they run it. You guys are now running a schedule similar to Velisca, which yeah. I like to where you got day tours every day except for Mondays. And right. right. And so yep, that's correct. It, it makes it easy. You could actually go do Velisca, you know, first thing or last thing and come over, drive 30 miles and do do a tour of Malvern at the same time and head on up to Omaha and get hit the squirrel cage jail. You could do a little tour. Yeah. And even hit maybe even hit Manila, and if it's still exactly. open, exactly. You know, there's a lot of different things that you could do in with in a day tour in the area, and uh, it's very it's very interesting how all of that just kind of fits right there in that you know that area of of Iowa. It's just amazing to me. It's like what is it about the the land itself? Maybe you know that's I don't know for lack of a better word, like tainted, right? Well, <laughs> like, what I mean, is going on we there? don't know. I mean, the Indian history is so not kept in certain parts of the country. Yes. Now, over by where we live, where one of the axe murder houses is from, mm -hmm. you know, the, the pre, pre Velisca axe murder house is the Paola axe right. murder house. That town yes. was actually founded in the fifth in 1529. That town oh, has wow. their history going back, the Native American history going back to 1529. Wow. So so we've got, we can go over there and we can get all kinds of stuff from the Native American history because five tribes were there and they kept all that, that history. Amazing. So that we've lucked so out on that. so impressive. Yeah, so, no kidding. Because but, that is not a common tale. That is amazing. Yeah, especially in this part of the country. Now, if you go east, you got a lot more of that. So, so this past weekend... You you said that you told me that you were working on a project. Are you, yes. you going to talk about that project? So officially, we have started filming and production on uh, A Brush With Evil Part 3, which is the final chapter in all of this mess. Um, so we've been going all over uh all over the place but i wanted to i wanted to bring in some some buddies of mine that they have some very interesting ideas as far as the paranormal is concerned and i haven't uh like one of my buddies is seth alney he lives in the des moines area and i i love seth like a brother and i just haven't been able to work with him as much as I would have liked. So I brought him in on the project. Um, I brought my buddy Chris Case in on the project. Um, obviously, my buddy Johnny Hauser from the Velisca House, I got him in on the project. And I was like, let's just put our minds together here and come up with something absolutely ridiculous, right? And so well, we are doing a, a crazy series of experiments where we put like half of my team over in Malvern Manor. We put another half of the team in a location that's 150 miles away and trying to actively elicit responses from the other location or make specific things happen to our buddies who are 150 miles away. You know, it's uh, pretty fascinating stuff what we've come up with so far. Um, so yeah, I can't wait to, uh, I, like the editing process has already begun. And so we're just, you know, going over all of the evidence and stuff. So pretty interesting well, stuff. And I bet you, I know the location, but I won't. I know. bet you, I bet you do. <laughs> I, I know it was about 150 miles away from anything right. in Malvern, but right. you know, it, it will be interesting to see what you guys get. Um, because yeah. I know we've got some stuff that's going to be coming out um, as well. We're finishing up some stuff ourselves with uh, nice. the filming of uh, The Deep Darkness. So that's going to be coming up here. Thank goodness they didn't want to do anything last week. So, but right? everybody, no kidding. everybody get ready for a break. You get, this is going to be a, a short break. So you guys got time to go get a drink, go to the restroom, let me cough. 
and all the other stuff. So <laughs> join us back here at WBHM-DB out of Birmingham, Alabama, and we'll be back very soon with Josh. WPHM Digital Broadcasting. The best in paranormal talk radio. Welcome back to the Paranormal Pride. I'm talking with Josh Hurd. A little bit of everything in the paranormal. So when they say jack of all traits, he definitely is. So I hope you guys are, have some questions for, for Josh because you know what? If he doesn't have an answer, he'll find one. He's got them. I will how many, try. <laughs> how many books do you have out now? Um, I've done six books so far. I've got so many ideas for more. It's just no time to sit down and do it, you know? Such and, crazy stuff. Well, how do you have time? You're also working on in, in, uh, Into the Light as well, number two, weren't you? Right, yeah. God, that was so much fun. Oh, my Lord. So my buddy, Dave Glidden, you know, he, like, I guess this was, like, a little over a year ago. He took me out to... Cause we were doing a screening in Joplin, Missouri. And he took me out then to the Joplin spook light after everything was done because I wanted to see it. I wanted to experience it myself. And we saw something, but I can't definitively say, Oh, that was the Joplin spook light or that wasn't or what have you. Um, but regardless, like he pitched this idea, like, Hey man, like this whole phantom light, thing happens all over the country all over the world do you want to maybe like hop on board with this and do a documentary film I'm like dude yeah we like you know we went out to north carolina last year and went to the brown mountains which were amazing we saw something captured something on film that was super cool uh, but then he had this idea of uh, doing a part two and 
I mean, that took us, you know, to like Arkansas and uh, parts of Missouri and Oklahoma and all over the place. And it was awesome. Um, I will say like this documentary that, that Dave's currently like putting together now with part two there, like it, it threw me for such a loop. Like I'm still, uh, I'm still trying to even contemplate what went on with us out there. Um, I, I can't even describe it. I don't even know what it was. I can't wait for you guys to see it. <laughs> like, I can't wait to see it myself. <laughs> well, <laughs> but Dave hopefully you guys uh, do it again in Ottawa. That was a good place to see it. That was cool. That was so cool. That place was awesome. And it was haunted, and nobody. And I told them it yeah. was, and they still haven't gotten me in there. And it's like, well, I don't really need to get in there. I already told you guys it's haunted. Yeah. Right. So, but I told you guys when we were in there. So we do have a question from Cassie. She's Cassie, so oh, sassy, cool. you guys, on, on YouTube, if you want to find her. She's also in Leavenworth. She's on the city council there, I believe. So she's important. Keep her in mind. That's good stuff. Yeah. Is Joplin the closest reported place for spook lights? Um, closest, it kind of, I guess, depends on where you're at. So in the first Into the Light, we actually went to the Des Moines, Iowa area. And then we did Joplin as well. So I guess um, kind of depends on geography, but there are a few that are around. I know there's another one in Arkansas too. There, I mean, there's a few different ones in Arkansas, uh, Texas. Uh, man, they're just all over the place. Um, you know, it's just, it's one of those things that's so interesting because we don't know what is causing this. And in some of these stories and some of these things that have happened to other people, the light will approach them. And then in certain cases it will like move around them and then continue on the path that it was on um, after it gets around these people that are observing it, almost suggesting that it has some form of intelligence to it. Right now, other, other claims are just like, Oh, we saw this happening. It was just here. It was floating. It was, flashing it was doing whatever and then it just kind of blinks out of existence and it's gone um that to me doesn't necessarily uh register with intelligence necessarily but um there's definitely something going on and i my biggest thing is it, it's one of the subjects in the paranormal field that is so overlooked um uh, by everybody um you know we're always after ghosts or i mean whatever the big things. you know people bigfoot what, aliens yeah and all that stuff. we're always going after bigfoot yeah and it's just it's just one of those things where i'm just like god how has not a lot of people really talked about this or you know gone out and tried to document this or whatever and so i was absolutely on board with dave when he asked me to to be a part of it i'm like yeah dude man, let's check this out so well, I, it is all over the place. We just thought it was uh, more of a guy bonding thing, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're, we're you know kind of laughing at you guys and going, okay, whatever. You know, it just sounded like a way to get out and go camping and have a reason to be yeah. out there and get people yeah. to pay for it. But you know, yeah. it, but it turned out okay. So I was actually shocked yeah. with it and and stuff. But, you know, I wonder, I do, do people from the Oklahoma side of the spook lights, do they see them from that side? There are some that definitely do, yes. And it's, it's interesting, too, because they, they have, there's one specific road, and they, they just call it spook light road or what have you. But, you know, the majority of people are going to see it there. But, I mean, you're literally on the border. I mean, literally right on the border. And so, yeah, I mean, people are seeing it not only on Spooklight Road, they're seeing it in the fields around. Uh, they're seeing it kind of go right into their front yards. Uh, some people have seen it um, come up to their windows and things of that nature. There are people that are reporting it's gone into their, their vehicles while they're sitting in the vehicles, which 
I don't know if I want to get that close to it. But no, because that gets kind of close to abduction, you know. Right. 